Some pollutants from the BP oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico end up as far north as New England? That could happen if a hurricane or tropical storm hits the Gulf region and moves northward. No one's really thought about the effect of material coming over from the ocean areas and marine areas onto land. Geochemist Sid Mitra from East Carolina University is studying how far hydrocarbons released as the oil breaks apart, and some of them toxic, can reach inland. Mitra was in the Gulf region recently taking baseline readings for a long-term study. Once the air goes through the filters and the plugs and it passes out here, essentially everything that we're interested in that's in the air is caught either on the filters or on these plugs. They're sampling air and water before a hurricane strikes, then will return during and after a hurricane or tropical storm to take more readings. What they're looking for are hydrocarbons associated with the oil. They break away from oil into the air during evaporation or burning, and also break away in the water, both naturally and with dispersants applied to break up the oil. Any type of carbon molecules, carbon-containing chemicals that are in the surface slick or the surface areas of the Gulf of Mexico would be picked up by hurricanes and storms, and then that material could also be dropped by precipitation on land in areas further upland away from the coast. If the dispersant chemicals are mixed in, they could also be carried inland by rainfall and wind currents. If the material is toxic, there could be toxic effects. Oil and water don't mix in general, but many of the compounds that are in oil start dissolving very readily. Those are the hydrocarbons, many of which are toxic um, at low concentrations. Inside a hurricane, bands of rain drawn up from the ocean meet in the eye wall, the most violent section. Here, winds of up to 200 miles per hour spiral upward carrying moisture and any particles in the water. A fully formed hurricane can reach up to 500 miles in diameter. And while the winds diminish when it moves inland, the rain continues to fall as it moves northward into the United States. Our samples that are going to be in here are basically going to be representative of the entire Lake Moripa, not just one spot in Lake Moripa. Mitra says the oil spill has created a sort of reverse problem that needs to be studied. Scientists are usually studying how pollutants go from land into the sea. There have been very few studies looking at how carbon, hydrocarbons, any material from the ocean can actually make it up onto land. Most of us who study global carbon cycle, we worry about rivers draining material into the ocean. On this trip, Mitra took samples in Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi and northward to North Carolina. The research is funded through the National Science Foundation. If people who are living in what's called upland areas, thinking to themselves, okay, I don't really need to be concerned as much about the health effects of the oil spill because I don't live near the coast. And if you actually have rain that has some of these hydrocarbons in it, it's not gonna be raining oil as you think of it, but it may very well be raining hydrocarbons which are coming from that oil slick in the Gulf of Mexico.